came in the game, no name. Now that know the boy, hold up, wait, let me pose twice. Told my mom I'm a lift, nice two is out of girls female. Hey buddy! Uh-oh. We both have working microphones. Episode, only, episode 100 and whatever the fuck we're on. Episode we, 10 trillion, and we had to have three false starts to get the microphones working. For the first time... We figured out how to plug our shit in. Say, you didn't happen to do a bunch of drugs, did you? Uh, usually. Usually. <laughs> it's... Just beer drugs. It's just a Thursday. Just beer drugs. What's up, man? Uh, chilling. Yeah, you doing good? I'm doing great, actually. I had a, I had a fantastic day. That's... Fucking delightful. I'm really glad to hear that. How are you, buddy? I'm okay. <laughs> I feel like that's um that's an un- unfortunately common response on our here show. Are you okay? I'm okay. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Listen, Dog Dad's ghost blog is, you know, um look, dad dad this dad dog, <laughs> this dog dad. Did this dude just do this? This dude just did this. And this dad dog is an unhappy parent. Oh boy, what what'd she do, bud? Look, I I don't know what it is. I felt like we grew her past the phase of when eating shit was going to be problematic. Like litter, like feces. No, no, eating possessions and mm. furniture in our house. I think the uh, the York oh. bark hex. Yeah, no, uh, that's uh, you're the, right. The turquoise ish one. Oh, I got it. Um, mm. Uh oh. Mm. Oh geez. Oh geez, Rick. <sighs> I was all excited because, like, we have our first advertiser and shit tonight. I'm like, oh, we're a real podcast. And then we start out with just can't plug three, the microphones in. <laughs> three false starts. Can't turn the fucking soundboard on. No soundboard. All right, you're good now. All right. Well, so anyway, my dog. Bark, Bjork, Bark. Is a little shit bird. And it's. Bird dog? Bird dog. You got a pigeon rat? Bird dog's ghost, damn it. <laughs> uh, now she just is eating everything in the house. Including the couch. Well, you should probably fucking feed her, man. And the couch cushions. Bark, bork. Well, no. Bork. You're so supposed the, to feed them, like, at least once a day. So that was the other problem, is she was she was getting, she was eating, except she was eating all her food. And by all her food, I mean she figured out a way to pop up in her food container and ate, like, ten meals worth of food in one sitting, and we had to, like, stay up with her all night and make sure she didn't Damn. die. Yeah, that girl big. <laughs> that girl big. Too big. Bro, I swear to God, I, we called her job of the pup because her fucking tummy was just like wiggling back That's and forth. cute, but unfortunate. It was unfortunate. Guys, don't let your dogs eat all their food. It can actually hurt them really, really badly. Like, I think literally everyone else who has a dog knows that, right? Bark, Bjork, bark. <laughs> well, this, I'm a new dad, Spencer, so I'm fucking learning. And I am growing through my learning. I, I grow from the things that frustrate me. Fair enough. I grow from the... See, I have to repeat the mantra to get it to really sink in. I grow from the things that frustrate me. Bark, bork, bork. Whoa, robot dog source. I don't, nice. know, how, I don't know how I did you that. You are an innovator, sir. Thank you. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I, I literally couldn't do that again if I tried. All right. Contact in the desert part two. Uh, where did we leave off? Were we going to play any listener voicemails today or are we just going to dive oh, right in? Uh, we can play some voicemails if you want. I haven't, as usual, I haven't like gone through and screened any in particular. I but feel like that generally is what makes it most fun. Is I can pick a few random ones if you'd like. Let's pick a few random uh, voicemails. Oh, okay. Really quickly, as a quick aside in between our... So last week, if you didn't listen to last week's episode about Contact in the Desert, uh, you should. Spencer went with what if correspondent Andrew Poitras and uh, we're doing recaps on last week's episode, this week's episode, as well as on uh, last week's Patreon. So if you go to patreon.com slash what if podcast, you can get all the exclusive contact in the desert content over there. Um, but before last week's contact in the desert episode, we did an episode about shadow people and holy shit. Did you all write in about shadow people? Oh, you're, you're saying this up. Like we're going to play a voicemail about shadow people. I'm going to play a random voicemail that most likely is not about shadow people. No, that's people. totally fine. I was just going to say, I noticed this week we got multiple voicemails and multiple emails. Hella people were like, yo, shadow people are real as fuck. They haunted me as a child. We, or we they got some me strong reactions house. to that one, yeah. People were like... Mostly negative. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it was because we left the shadow people topic being like, this feels a little goofy. This feels like people being overtired or... You're goofy! Whatever. They're and real. A lot of people were Yeah, a lot of people gave us the fuck off, bud. Mm. I, done, I done seen it and... I don't believe you. You need more people. This from Google's translation seems to not be related to that, but who knows? Cool. My name is it. Fuck. God damn it. Uh, my name is Altex, and I do not support 
Tom DeLonge or any of his horse shit. But I do think he has some cool shit on his website. Okay. All right, boys. Just fucking keep a few hairs long and straight. Don't leave them curly. It's about as much as I got you fucking. You put tiny little curlers. <laughs> um, if I were you, I would have been smashing the you're too deckered bud button. <laughs> But this you know is on, what? it's on you now, so I gotta be honest I don't with get you. to do these things anymore. I gotta be honest with you. I was so captivated <laughs> by that message. I forgot that I am also holding the soundboard again. First of all, can we can you just play the beginning one more time? Uh, yeah. Because I'm pretty it's sure got off to a really rocky start no, it was and, great. Then, and then got worse. It's great. <laughs> My name is it. Fuck God damn it. Oh, uh, get dead on this, this one. I do not support. Tom DeLong or any of his <laughs> My name is <laughs> fuck shit. <laughs> oh, 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 oh God, Thanks, I love, Ray. I love the sentiment of like, I'm gonna fucking call them. Oh fuck shit. What's my name though? Oh fuck. What's my name again? Get oh, it. Get it because he hates Tom DeLong. I do. Well, but he likes his website. Mm, also, um, also he likes straight pubic hair. Apparently. This one's long and has a lot. Oh, of, dang. <laughs> this one's long and has a lot of things bleeped out. Let's see what we got. That sounds perfect. Boys, Celtics. All right, so it's fucking left and right like a pendulum, right? You guys are allowed to call us when you're sober. <laughs> by the way, you don't have to be blackout <laughs> drunk to leave us a voicemail. What the fuck? Or. <laughs> Or just fucking do <laughs> just it. Just send it, I guess. What the... Uh, damn it. I'm, I'm, your two dicker butt isn't on here. Oh, okay. Well. It never, like, decreased in its arc. It was always, like, 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right. Anyway, UFO has been taken over by... Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I'm pretty sure okay. that's. I'm pretty sure that's... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the same uh, outtakes from the previous one. I think we have a... Oh, we have three more... From the same person. Okay, we're gonna stitch those all together and listen to them at a later date. And I mean, I'm not. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna. Okay. We love you for leaving them. Um, a lot of these have people's phone numbers in them, so I'm gonna skip those. Let's I'll, see. Let's see what this one is. Grins up, grins up. Yo, what's up, my dudes? This is Koi calling from Asheville. Uh, Koi, like wanted to say hey, love you guys and stuff. How are uh, you doing? Just. Makes me feel like I'm back in college with my boys. Ah, fuck. Uh, I'm 33. If you guys ever get out to Asheville, I will totally set up a weed scavenger hunt for you. Hell so yeah. come on out. Uh, wanted to pose a few episode ideas. All right. Wondered if you ever heard of Lake City Quiet Pills. Hell Online conspiracy. Yeah, bro! Uh, Jesus. Check yes, it out. Started in Reddit. Could be a uh, like mob hit. Hitman website that's in secret code mm -hmm. um the second thing i wanted to say was i don't remember anyways Tight. uh keep doing what you're doing guys thanks late does any late do, do hell any yes sober women over the age of 22 listen to our show or no. is it just all drunk 20 something year old dudes i mean it's us man <laughs> this is what we are on the show I mean, that's our I'm, people, bro. That's our people. All right. Um, something about negative energy. Thanks for calling us. We will 100% come to Asheville and take you up on... Uh, your town is lovely. I've been there before, and I would love to come back. We're going to take you up on your scavenger hunt idea. Um, yeah, we'll, drink, we'll drink Coors Light with your college buddies. I'm fine with that. I'm yeah, certainly not above that. That's fine. I'll go walk around the woods and find your weed. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll right. meet back in the middle. Let's play this one, I guess. Hey, boys. Uh, we, I think we played that one earlier. Uh oh. Um, I love when you guys put your phone numbers in these, but that makes it hard to play. Well, you can here, just play uh, one we, and we'll bleep it out. We got, yeah, we got one here. Hey guys, uh, this is Sarah. Hi. I live in Minneapolis, Prospect Park area. Hell what yeah. up? Um, Represent. Been to the show for about six months now. Love it. Thank you. Um, in the middle of listening to the. show, if you open your window at like 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, you can probably hear us yelling. That's shadow people <laughs> true. episode and had to call. I'm like 10 minutes in, but had to call and tell you guys that I've had an experience with it. See, I'm um, saying, dude. When I was 16, 15 or 16, um, I was growing up in Iowa and my parents were going through a divorce. 
And one night, I think I might have been alone in the house or alone in the upstairs. You think you might have been alone? That is spooky to begin with. Of my parents' house. And for some reason, I was sleeping in my parents' bedroom. And in the middle of the night, I feel something weird. So I kind of just open my eyes. And all of a sudden, I see this, like, black figure with a hat. Just, I, no, I no, like, no, no, see no, it no, 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 lean no. down over me and get, like, I guess where the face would be, Ugh. right over my face. Ugh. And I freak out. I Hell freak out. no. I throw all the lights on in the upstairs, and I, I just run down to the first floor of the house and then I kind of fully wake up. Um, that was the first instance I've had with shadow people. First? Um, it's too I've many. seen other things in my sleep or when I'm kind of waking up. Heck. Um, but that was probably the worst and I don't no, if I believe that it's something extraterrestrial or like a ghost, or if it's just in our our mind, but it definitely scared the shit out of me. Fuck yeah, and it did. I am scared to this of shadow people now, and watched the movie on Netflix, The Nightmare, and well, couldn't I- sleep for like two nights after that. Only. Come on. <laughs> what? Can, Sarah, don't... Sarah? It was Sarah, right? Yeah. Sarah, don't do that to yourself. Go watch, like, The Sandlot or something. Yeah. Why would you want... Don't do mm. that to yourself. If um, look, Self-care, baby. If you know... <laughs> if you know that you're not... If you have a propensity, don't... Don't feel that fire. You don't need to feel that fire. I feel like they're real or that I've seen... Something like that. Um, but I recently listened to an episode on psychic vampires from the last podcast on the left, and they kind of mention something to the fact that shadow people could just be psychic vampires absorbing our energy. And the only reason I give credence to that a little bit is because that's an idea. I had like very negative. Oh, that was three, oh. that was three minutes. Well, if some dickheads on a podcast said it, it must be true, right? I mean, <laughs> sounds like us. <laughs> That's how we do things also here. Also sounds like us. Hey, thanks for calling, Sarah. Shout out Minneapolis. Repping N- yeah, the town. E- except that that means there's shadow people in our town. Well. I would prefer that she were from someplace shitty and far away. That we don't ever have to go to so that yeah. we can never get attacked by the shadow people? Correct. Mm, well, Sarah was legit, though, one of many people who were like, yeah, right, boys. Got a story for you, sweary boys. Yeah, you guys don't know shit. Shadow people are out here. Um, can you turn down the soundboard? It's really loud. You can. How do I do it? Um, there's a button. Volume. Some, yep. Do I press T- it? Give that a press. Pressed. And then that big knob there. Yep. Spin it to the left a little bit. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. That's much better. <laughs> he says. Fuck with me, I'm grown now. Hell yeah. I'm grown. I'm not to use the soundboard. Y'all fuck with me. I'm grown Very now. Very grown. All right. Where did we... I think that's enough voicemails. Where did we leave off on... If you want to leave us a voicemail, it's 612-246-4614. Yes. We talked about Terry Lovelace. Yeah. We talked... Uh, yeah, we, ta- we, yep. we told the whole Terry Lovelace story. Yeah, we talked about Li- Linda Malton Howe's crazy ass, right? Did. Did we talk about Giorgio? I don't think we talked about Giorgio. Okay, Did cool. we talk about Giorgio? I don't think we talked about Giorgio. I don't think so. Let's start we just with- played the the samples from Giorgio. The uh, you're, you're not my friend, girl. I'm a Yeah, okay. And uh, Some opinions are so whack. That God, I wish I had real audio of those. May I? I should hit up. They were filming and recording all those speeches. I should hit up contact and be like, "Hey, uh, if we promote your event, you want to share that audio with me? Just like a couple seconds of it. Yeah, it's all in good fun. Um, all right, so let's let's go through Giorgio's speech presentation, AMA, whatever it was that he did. AMA. You did say I think you told me it was just like a Q and A. Yeah. So he. Well, first of all, he walks out to the. Um, 
the 2001 music. Cool. I forget what that thing's actually called. I don't know. The s- Spark Zarathusa or something. Z- it's, I don't know. Zathura? Zathura? Yeah, maybe. I think it might something be something like that. Um, so he comes out to that. Oh my God, it's full of stars. And like strobe lights and a literal standing ovation. I'm kind of, I know this is absolutely not the song that you just uh, said he came out to, but I'm almost thinking of like, you remember that song from the Space Jam? It was like, I'm on it there and welcome to the, I'm just imagining. Just like the Space Jam theme? I'm just imagining him coming out to like, everybody get up, it's time to <laughs> slam now. I mean, like, they should have had, they should have had everyone shit. come out to that, honestly. Like that would have made a lot of sense. I'm on board. Uh, it's not, it's this one. I in case you don't know what I'm talking about and haven't seen the greatest movie ever made. It's, uh... Yeah. Ooh, ominous. Yeah. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Sprock Zara... <laughs> Jesus, oh, Zara All right. Dustra. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so imagine the fucking alien meme guy running out onto the stage to that shit with his 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 chubby self and his halfway buttoned up like I'm going on an expedition shirt. You know where you can like roll up the sleeves but then button them to the oh, other yeah. part of the sleeve. You, because you're going to be doing such hardcore exploring that you may unfurl your rolled up sleeves so at they, any time. So they must be buttoned in place to avoid such an incident. Exactly. Was he wearing a safari hat? He was not, because you got to show off the hair, man. That's true. <laughs> also, he wouldn't get recognized if he wore a hat, because everyone did, knows him by his big, tall hair. He did talk about Indiana Jones for the first 10 minutes of his presentation, though. Uh, you also told me, not on the show, but before the show, that many of these people mentioned Indiana Jones. Did, did we talk I, about that I on the show? I think that was on the show, wasn't uh, okay. it? He was one of them, to okay. say that he was the Indiana Jones of something. No, that's right, because we talked about it being kind of sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so he says that he's not doing a presentation in the traditional sense, um, and that he's going to do a Q&A session because at so many of these conferences and presentations, it's just like a one-sided monologue for two hours, and you don't get a chance to interact with people or have a dialogue at all. So he says that, and there's a microphone set up, and he says, all right, you know, if you want to come ask a question, just line up at the microphone, and we'll just go through people until we're out of time. Why are you being so lazy, my boy? Well, come on, man. Right. I mean, oh no, absolutely. I'm just saying, absolutely. Um, he then, so somebody comes up and asks a question. She says three words, and he says, "Actually, hold on a second. And he goes into a t- literally twenty minute monologue with this poor woman standing there waiting to ask her question at the microphone. God damn. I think you turned yourself down too much, bro. Um. And he starts, he interrupts her to start talking about how it's the 10 year anniversary of ancient aliens and then tell the entire backstory of how ancient aliens came to be a TV show and how it all came down to him being great. And that's why ancient aliens exists. He was the only one that could have connected the dots and done it. And no one had ever done it this way before. And ancient aliens, fuck yeah. Yeah. Weird. And then it spent another few minutes talking about Indiana Jones. And then when he was finally going back to the woman who had started her question 20 minutes ago, said, okay, so you guys, you you can ask me questions. You can ask me questions like, and then asked himself a question and then spent another five minutes answering the question he had just asked himself. No way. While this woman is still standing at the microphone waiting to ask her question. No way. He said, Giorgio, is there anything that you guys ever weren't allowed to show on the show? No, actually, our producers, blah, blah, and he started responding to his own question. Hell no! (laughs) Um, In this crazy-ass diatribe, he managed to say that everyone at SETI are, quote, a bunch of buffoons. Oh. Um, He said that anyone suggesting that UFOs are demonic, you're not my friend, you're a fucking moron. That's what that quote was from. He also said, if we are living in a computer simulation, we should all just kill ourselves. Shit went bad real quick. You know Which I, mean? I think is a extremely irresponsible thing to say to a crowd of like a thousand plus people. Yeah. Suggesting that maybe not just you, but actually all of us should kill ourselves like right now. This is it, guys. Especially in a room where there was no shortage of, of mental health issues. He's a, he probably followed it up with like, also there's some Kool-Aid in the bag. Me. <laughs> um 
I don't necessarily want to run through all of the questions and all the answers because most of them were not that interesting. Um, a couple of highlights. He claimed that there are palm tree fossils in Switzerland, which I couldn't exactly verify, but seems to be at least partially true. Okay. That climate change has happened in the past and that parts of the world that are now warm used to be cold and vice versa. Sure. Um, I don't think that's like revolutionary though. I don't, yeah, no. I mean, I'm not saying I can tell you much more about that scientifically. I just mean like... Big same. It doesn't seem... <laughs> it doesn't... Big same. It just doesn't necessarily seem like he's... Uh, you know, I don't know if that's a phrase or not, but it's going to be. <laughs> big same is definitely <laughs> big same. <laughs> um, Major league. He Somebody asked him how he met his wife, because I guess his wife is like known in this weirdo community, and she goes to conferences with him and sells crystals and stuff. Cool. Um, what? Oh, wow. Boy. He said... I'm having a hard time again, man. Remember how yeah, 10 yeah, minutes yeah. in my head hurt? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's hurting again. Well... We got a long way to go. All right. Um, he said that he met his wife because he was looking at pictures of himself on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me finish the sentence. No, you- <laughs> no way. <I> won't. <laughs> what? You either let me finish or get back on your microphone. One or the other. <laughs> okay. What an incredible thing to admit <laughs> in front of thousands of people. So anyway, the other day I'm looking at myself on Twitter, right? <laughs> so he was look- sure, George, yeah. <laughs> he was looking, like you do. He was looking at pictures of himself on Twitter. Oh my god! Saw her in one of them and DM'd her because she was. He was like, "Damn, she's fine. I need to DM her." Wait, saw her in one of them or yeah. saw saw like a, an account that posted a photo of him. Uh, I guess I don't know. Okay. One, either one. I don't think it really makes a difference, honestly. Well, I was wondering more if it was like, like he took a photo at some conference with this woman and this woman posted the photo and he yeah. came back across the photo and was like, oh, I, was I think th- it was that. Okay. All right. Got it. Or like she was tagged in a photo with him or something like that. Bro. What mm-hmm. an astonishing revelation that Actually, this man <laughs> acknowledged in front of everyone that this is a thing that he did. And let's be real. This is not something he did once. And this no, is something he no, does. No, no, no. And he said it like he thought it was cute. Oh, boy. <laughs> like he thought that was a like a cool, endearing fact about himself and his wife. Totally. Mm-hmm. totally. I actually wrote in my notes in all caps across like three lines, just big yikes. <laughs> Hell no. (laughs) Hell no. Um, He told us that he believes potatoes, corn, and weed are came from the aliens. Okay. Because there's no, according to him, don't. No one actually knows anything about science at this place. It turns out. (laughs) Um, There's no evolutionary history of those three things. They just like appeared on the planet one day. Therefore, the aliens must have left them. That's. An idea. <laughs> about thirty seconds That's after. An idea. He, after about thirty seconds after he said that, Poitras just turned and silently showed his phone to me, in which he had Googled, "Where are potatoes from?" And Google just says Peru. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know you're at a wild shit conference when someone on stage can literally be like. We have no idea where potatoes are from. They're probably from the aliens. And everyone's like, oh. And like Poitras literally just turns Google around. Uh, uh, I think it's Peru, actually. Peru? I'm mean, sure what he meant was like, they don't have an evolutionary ancestor or something like that. But Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but whatever. The reason, uh, hey, man, if he doesn't have to think about shit, I don't have to think about shit. <laughs> right? He also said the reason we haven't found any ancient alien tech, because somebody asked, like, it was a hilarious... Let me look at my actual paper notes. It was a hilariously phrased question. Um, he said something about, like, when we find ancient alien tech, how can we help you guys use it the best? Who's you guys? Like, the ancient aliens crew? 
Oh, like um, like Giorgio Saluculos right, and like is, David Childress and stuff. Yeah, is gonna have any use for alien technology that you or I don't have? So the question was, how can we help you guys use ancient alien tech for good? Oh, as opposed to uh, you know falling into the wrong hands and and whatnot. Giorgio said, "I don't know. We haven't ever found any." <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure that was the question. In fact, which, no, what I should say is, I'm sure that wasn't to the question. <laughs> which I think he meant to say, like, well, so he went on to say, we haven't found any because the aliens brought replicators with them to Earth to make all the things that they gave to us. And then when they left, they took the replicators away. So they didn't bring technology here from another planet. They gave us shit to build things. Oh, Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know, dude. Um, let's see. Uh, he also, I just wrote down some random quotes. Do it. I want them. Such as, don't Show take- me what you got. Don't take ayahuasca indoors. That sounds it's actually- solid advice. Like pretty I, good I, advice. Yeah, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, if you think the earth is flat, please leave. Somebody came up and asked a flat earth question and he refused to answer it and just kept yelling over him and told the guy to leave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. This is the first thing he's done that I agree with. He, he was on to a couple things. All right. Um, the third person to ask you points back. The third person to ask a question just walked up to the microphone holding a skull. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Handed it to him and said, please explain this. And none of the rest of us could see it, but I'm guessing maybe it was like a weird looking skull. I don't know. And uh, if I'm if I'm a presenter on stage at an event like this and someone walks up and tries to hand me a skull. Ah, now your fingerprints are on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I am the fuck out of there. Always good to have another set of prints on a skull. Jesus. Um, Giorgio said, quote, that's weird. And then just set it down on the podium and told us to come to his lecture tomorrow. Oh, boy. Uh, lastly, I think lastly, this thing, yeah, lastly, he thinks that the Coral Castle mm, mm-hmm. was built using some sort of weird green orbs slash lights. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. That apparently somebody saw once. Well, look, if you're not prepared to do the research, Brian, why make the statement in the first place? I make- Great question. I'm... Our guy Giorgio was on a bunch of them, not just one. I'm honestly... I'm honestly, sh- uh, you're okay. <laughs> you're gonna say really, or I shouldn't be, but I'm honestly shocked at how, I mean, how ludicrous this sounds, dude. This weekend was so I've been into this shit for a long time, right? Like since I was a kid, and now have been like more actively into it for a few years, and I was blown away by just how over the top stupid a bunch of this shit was. Hmm. Like, just patently, like, obviously false, absurd statements, left and right, all day long, Mm. and no one ever calling anything out. And, like, I think that, to me, is what's so... I mean, I know we joke about this shit a lot, and we'll continue to, but the thing for me that's so frustrating, and we've talked about this on the show more than once before, is you can, you know you can explain away a lot of the stuff that we talk about with a lot of science and a lot of reasoning and a lot of logic and a lot of um, lore and urban legend. And, you know, there's a lot of explanations, but there's a percentage of the stuff that we always come across. That's like, huh, there's some genuinely weird shit that happens in in, the world, in our world. Yes. And, and I would love to take a serious look at that weird shit that happens in our world. Exactly. Yeah. And when people like Giorgio Saluclos decide to go on stage and host a Q and A that is not a Q and A, or yes, or sort of is a Q and A but is not like leading anywhere, mm. and Linda Bolton Howe makes wildly cats in half. wildly un unbased claims about the structures that are. St- Anti gravity ceilings, two miles underneath <laughs> and the, and the Antarctic ice shelf, mm-hmm. and have anti gravity ceilings where it is confirmed that it is seventy two <laughs> degrees. Confirmed. 
Confirmed. Confirmed. It was 68, Ryan. Okay, let's not get carried away. Come on now. It's not that hot. Okay, it's not that hot down there. Don't be ridiculous. Um, It just fucks the whole thing up. Yeah, absolutely. For everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody gets fucked up because of it. Yep. But they get paid. So that's the other thing that's so frustrating to me, too, is like, I mean, come on, man. You're just going to go up there and be like, I was on a TV show once. What do you want to know about anything? But 1,500 people ate it up. And I'm sure he made fucking hella money for it, too. Yeah. For him, individually, it's the right thing to do. I mean, I guess. I mean, for, for him as, like, a personality and from an earning perspective, like, people loved it. People but thought like, it was great. He was entertaining. He did what he was booked to do. I you know? guess. I'm just like, you can't you can't even put together a 20-side presentation. If you're going to talk I about— think he, I think he did. I think this was in addition to that. I just didn't go to the other part. I see. So this was I, this intentionally was not the, designed to be a Q and A with him. Correct. This was not the only thing he was doing All over right. the weekend. That's a little different. Yeah, he was also giving a presentation and was also on a panel. This was like I see one thing he was doing throughout the whole weekend. All right, all right. I can give that more slightly yeah, yeah, more credence. Yeah. No, he he wasn't like cashing his entire check to say that's weird about a skull that people handed him and talk about DMing women on Twitter. <laughs> While looking at himself, <laughs> bro, that I wonder, fucking shredded me. Do you, God, do you think she tagged him in it, and he's just like scrolling through his mentions, or is he searching his own name? Yes. Is he searching Both. a hashtag? All of it, literally all of it. Okay. He's probably got alerts set up for like the ancient aliens hashtag and alerts for like his first and last name. I mean, and yeah. I guess with all of those things, if if someone's tweeting any of those, they're about him. I mean, I'm not going to say I haven't like searched for anybody like talking about the show on Twitter before, but it's a lot different to position it as like, so I was looking for pictures of my own face. <laughs> like what? <laughs> oh, so hey, do you want to fuck? <laughs> hey, you look, you look freaking cute and we're in this photo together. What's up? You trying uh, to get married right quick? Oh boy. Let's and freaking she was, do it. And she was, and she was trying to get married right quick. Uh, Ryan, we have a gosh dang ad to read. Hey! That's a very good question. You need to go and speak to some owls. <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta get your belly off the pads, bud. It was actually my phone <laughs> when I was pulling up the ad copy, but you know what? You want to read it? I got it. Uh, talk to the people, man. All right. This week's episode is brought to you in part by Stitcher Premium. Sick. Uh, yeah, we want to recommend some podcasts that are available on Stitcher Premium. If you're looking for true crime, there's True Crime Garage off the record, which is the latest project from the True Crime Garage hosts, Nick and the Captain. Uh, they revisit some of the most haunting cases they've covered to date, and it's a compilation of hidden treasures, a chance to dive deeper, discuss new theories, and get updates on your favorite episodes of True Crime Garage. Yeah. Or... If you're looking for something a little different, comedian Chris Gethard's beautiful stories from anonymous people opens up the phone line to one anonym, anonymous caller and Chris can't hang up first no matter what. Holy shit, is that real? That's actually a really <laughs> tight concept. I fucking love that <laughs> idea so much. Oh my God, this I have is, unlimited are, respect for this. Are some of these episodes just like 10 hours long? I mean... Also, can we call him? Oh... <laughs> Yeah, but you'd have to be so lucky. That dude's mad famous. I don't know who it is, but cool. Um, from shocking confessions and family secrets to philosophical discussions and shameless self-promotion, anything can and will happen. Why don't we just promote our podcast for 10 hours? Hey, Chris, have you ever heard of a show called The What If Podcast? Oh, uh, we have 130 episodes. Let's play all of them for you. <laughs> <laughs> Into the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that would be so Or just like blast awful. him with, with soundboard sounds till oh, he hangs up. Everyone would boycott our podcast. You can also enjoy that. completely ad-free episodes of hit shows like Dr. Death, American History Tellers from the Wondery Network, or Cults, Serial Killer Cults and Serial Killers from the Paracast Parcast Network. Also Extraterrestrial on Parcast Network. Lit. Hey, uh, with Stitcher Premium, you get thousands of hours of original and ad free content like My Favorite Murder and Today Explained. Plus, you get early access to new releases, exclusive bonus episodes, and archives of your other favorite podcasts and hundreds of stand up comedy albums. And you know, we're on there too. The, the iffy boys be up in there. The sweary boys be all up in Stitcher Premium. So, Spencer, to get Stitcher Premium free, for one month, you get a full free month to try all those things that we just talked about and check them out. Uh, all you have to do is go to stitcherpremium.com and type in the promo code WHAT 
Which, boy, we should have had a little John Watt queued up for this. Yours was pretty good. Uh, It's just what? Put in the promo code what at StitcherPremium.com. You get a full free month trial of Stitcher Premium. You get access to all that premium content, thousands of hours, comedy albums, all the shows we talked about, as well as checking us out, uh, our show out on StitcherPremium.com as well. And the iffy boys get paid, so go do that shit. True that. StitcherPremium.com. Use the promo code what and get your free month. All right. Uh, Preston Dennett or David Wilcock? Which you want to do first? Oh, Billy. They're both. I saved the best two for last, so you really can't go wrong. <sighs> um, I think we should. I think we should save David Wilcock for the close. Okay. All right. Um, I... you may remember Preston Dennett because we've actually covered some of his stuff on the show before. Whoa, I'm nervous. Do you remember when we talked about the praying mantis aliens who could control time? Oh, I do. That was from... <laughs> oh, do I ever? That, I do. That was from Preston Dennett's book, Inside UFOs. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm, um, I'm not going to... I'm going to let that joke just hang in the air. I, Go ahead. Pre- Carry on. In, inside? Nah, just fine. It's fine. It's you, fine. you fucking UFOs? Is that the joke? I'm not. Mm. I'm certainly not. You could be. I'd rather not. Preston has. <laughs> Has he? No. Um, All right. <laughs> okay. So he's got a, he's got a book, bro. That would be the wildest presentation. <laughs> I fucked a UFO. <laughs> is, oh, is that our no. pre- is that our presentation at Contact next year? Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Since everybody else, my gets penis to- has been to space. <laughs> Since everyone a- else. AMA. <laughs> Since everybody else gets to lie. <laughs> While we're up here not telling the truth and shit, I've inseminated many spacecraft. <laughs> Bro, what if that was the first line of our presentation? Since everybody else gets to lie, uh, we're the sweary boys here to tell you about having sex with spaceships. <laughs> Number one, be careful. <laughs> Wrap it up. Um, <laughs> all right. So he's he's got a book called The Healing Power of UFOs, oh. in which he has, he's documented or is telling us about 300 cases of UFO healings. Okay. Mm-hmm. So his presentation was basically um, running through some of the highlights of these UFO healing uh, events. And can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. To my knowledge, and I know my knowledge is uh, shallower than yours. I don't, I don't hear about uh, UFOs or uh, what did Poitras text me to make sure that I didn't get it confused with? Um, no, uh, advanced aerial threats (AATs). Oh, that's that's the Tom DeLong lingo. Mm, but yeah, it. we'll talk about um, that later. The 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 whole trope of them being healing in nature is not something I had encountered before. Is yeah. that a common thing? Is that a thing? I don't think so. And I think that's why he compiled these is that it's sort of a unique branch of the UFO phenomenon. Okay. I see. Um, so he ran through these really quickly in his presentation and we tried to, <laughs> we tried to intervene and ask some clarifying questions. And after the third one, Portress literally got booed by other audience members i mean to be fair he was yelling in front of like thousands of people mm, at a speaker right mm, this one was smaller okay this was like a hundred people okay all right <laughs> but so he he hit a lot of highlights and and so my notes initially were very brief such as uh aliens cure aids Ooh, they use light medicine surgery uh michael evans got a brain implant UFOs can give you the shits. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, what camp these days? Let's a be UFO honest. cured a shark bite. Oh. People who are doing good work for humanity are more likely to be healed by UFOs. Oh. Grays do the most healing. Reptilians do the fewest. Or do the least. It's fewest. a reptilian. Yeah, they don't. If you see one, they are not here to help. <laughs> You're not getting band- um, you're not getting band aids for shit. I don't remember what this was in reference to, but I wrote down they healed Chuck's head cold. <laughs> Chuck had a cold, and the aliens fixed it. I guess Who, who's Chuck? I don't know. 
Well, if he was moving pretty quickly through the options, I guess it makes sense. Um, Just like a guy named Chuck. The aliens told a guy named Jim, stop smoking weed. This is not the life we had planned for you. Hell no! (laughs) Apparently the aliens are my mom. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They cured some woman's yeast infection. Okay. Uh, And then he has a whole chapter called Alien Dentists. (laughs) Aliens be out here fixing people's teeth. Okay. They used a crystal to remove Dan's wisdom teeth, and uh, they gave a dude named Trey Ayaros from Argentina a new set of teeth. That's an idea. He grew a whole secondary row of teeth behind his other ones, like a shark. Oh. Or like my puppy, who keeps spitting teeth out on the carpet. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mine's done doing that now. Um, A UFO cured Alan Godfrey's ED. Okay. As in erectile dysfunction. I, I knew what it stood for. I was just hoping you were going to move on right for the listeners. I was just hoping you were going to move on to the next one um, right away. Some gray aliens told Anna Jamerson that she was too fat. Oh, that's uh, so kind of them. <laughs> Again, I don't remember what this line was in reference to, but I wrote down, they saw it off the top of Ted's head. Okay. The top of Ted's head. Gone. Belongs to the aliens now. The top of Ted's head should with, with a saw. <laughs> probably be added to the list, I feel and like. And then the last thing in my notes, in all caps, was a UFO broke up a fight between two roosters. Ooh. So, at that point, that was the moment I was talking about where I literally threw my notebook up in the air and looked around at the rest of the room like, did y'all really just hear this and no, not one single person had a reaction and to the wildest shit I've heard all life. We're all... All of life. We're all just going to act like this is normal, huh? So if you go to the blue page, there's a section or a, a sample called Preston Dennett. You see that one? I do. We got to talk to Preston about this case specifically because it was the wildest UFO case I've ever heard of and I needed clarification. So... And we had run out of questions. <laughs> to... Wait, what do you mean? Oh, with we, we weren't allowed to ask more questions during his presentation. We had been cut off. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. We were not welcome anymore. Did you get the boot or you were just We didn't shushed? get kicked out. We just, you, after we got booed on the third one, I felt like a fourth one probably wasn't the, got right, it. the right move. You looked at Porches and you're like, hey man, we're here for a reason. And we'll find him after the presentation and follow up. <laughs> we might ruin that reason if we right, keep this right. up. Yeah, okay. We got a whole nother day here. Let's not get ourselves beat up by some old UFO enthusiasts. That sounds like kind of a bummer. So yeah, hit that Preston Dennett button and... Uh, We'll let him summarize this case. We'll hear from the man himself. Yeah, I wrote about it in the book. Okay. It comes from a lady by the name of Susan Navarre's Morton, okay. uh, who was invited we, to we turn that volume a rooster down a little bit. Fight. Illegal, by the way. There was a crowd of over 100 people. They were on stands. There was two roosters, and they were fighting and had become severely injured, and they were just barely pecking at each other. And it wasn't going all that well because they'd both become pretty injured. Okay. When two I believe it was two objects showed up, and one came quite low, and it shot, it was uh, spherical shaped, and it shot down two orange beams of light. Um, usually these beams of light are white, sometimes blue, purple, don't have a lot of orange beams, so I don't know what si- significance the color has, uh, but these were orange beams of light, each of which struck one rooster. For just a few moments, they glowed in a noticeable light, sort of an aura of light, and just a few seconds, everyone is screaming, it's causing complete panic, and uh, the rooster stood up, and this ended the fight, everyone left immediately, and there isn't a lot of information, I I got this from a news clipping, actually. Where, Where was that? This is in Texas. No, uh, the the publication that you found the clipping in. UFO news clipping service. It came from a Texas newspaper. Uh, And I have the actual source in my book. And uh, the name of the town, I believe I have that as well. And uh, she sent this story in as part of a a request. It's like, there was three stories and one of them was hers. And I'm like, wow, roosters. And that was the first animal healing I've heard of. Wow, rooster. Wow, <laughs> roosters. Everyone was screaming. <laughs> the way he said screaming he sounds so... like Forrest Gump or something. <laughs> the... We were all screaming. The way he said screaming was so great. Uh, 
Interesting, man. Yeah. It's a fun so, one. I bought his book because Sick. it sounded pretty lit and I needed more information <laughs> about this case specifically. Yeah, you wanted to dive in. Also, I've since found an email address for the woman who witnessed this UFO breaking up a cockfight. Oh, this was... If that's a thing we want to pursue This was further. recent? No, this was a long time ago, but this woman was like a teenager and now she's in her 70s, but I found her email address if we want to try and ask her about it. How'd you find her email address? I'm pretty good at Google. Well, how do you know it's hers? Could be someone by the same name. Pretty good at Google. Okay. I mean, I guess it's worth a shot. She. I found, Can you tell us about the aliens that healed your birds? I yeah. mean, yeah. Well, no. What, I'm, what's she gonna say? No. Okay. Yeah. No loss here. Um. Quick highlights from the book. Yes. Case number one seventy three. Shark bite on leg. Awesome. In January, I mean, awful, but awesome. In January of nineteen ninety one. Amador Pieza Velez saw a UFO hovering over a mountain in Ponce, Puerto Rico. Okay. Jose Maria Fernandez Martinez also saw the UFO earlier the same week. Uh, the object remained in place for more than 10 minutes, and Fernandez grabbed his camera and tried to record it. At that moment, his camera mal- malfunctioned. Following the incident, something very strange happened. Some days earlier, Fernandez had been bitten by a shark. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I would have led with that, Preston. His family and those around him saw Fernandez's <laughs> wound on his lower leg, which was severe enough that everyone knew it would take a long time to heal. Oh, this fucking non-specific language. The morning after trying to film the UFO, Fernandez woke up to find his leg and foot completely healed, showing only a small scar on his heel. I cannot tell that the being- beings who came here in the ship cured me, but something strange happened to me because my wound closed since last night. On that same evening, Fernandez's wife, Gloria Santiago, saw strange lights coming out of the water. Shark bite healed. Um, Shark bait. Ooh, ha, ha. (laughs) Case number 58, new teeth. New teeth. Uh, Also, in case you're wondering, case 26, roosters. Definitely. The one we just covered. Also, case 33, horse. Singular. Just one time. One healed horse. One time. (laughs) One time for my horse peeps. (laughs) Case number 58, new teeth. On December 30th, 1972, Ventura Maraceras of Argentina saw a bright light hovering above his home. Inside the light, he could discern a metallic craft with portholes. And through the portholes, he saw humanoid figures. At this point, he was struck by a brilliant flash of light, which shot out from the underneath of the craft. In the following weeks, he suffered from symptoms typical of radiation sickness, including hair loss, headaches, nausea, diarrhea, told you they'd make you shit yourself, eye irritation, and swollen red pustules on his neck. Hell no. (laughs) Doctors were baffled, but when he told them of his UFO encounter, they had no choice but to believe him. I'm pretty sure there's one more choice There are a whole bunch of other options, actually. His symptoms simply could not be faked. Okay. Besides, there were more, there was more evidence to support his story. The tops of the eucalyptus trees were scorched where the object had hovered. His cat disappeared in front of his eyes when Whoa. the beings when the beings came out of the craft. They stole his cat. They're delivering it to Linda oh, yeah. to be chopped up. Forty eight days later, the cat reappeared with severe burns on its back. Whoa! That cat was too resilient. They couldn't cut him in half. Finally, an abnormally large number of dead catfish were found in a small stream at the location of the sighting. In fact, there was so much evidence that the case attracted a lot of official attention. In less than a month, he was interviewed by more than or interviewed more than sixty times by many officials, including doctors, police, government officials, and UFO researchers. He took weeks to recover from his injuries caused by the UFO. Then, less than two months after the encounter, came the final but most unbelievable symptom of all. Uh oh. Verified by numerous doctors, engineers, police officers, and UFO investigators, Ventura, although 73 years old, began to grow his third set of teeth. Third? Well, I think he means baby teeth, adult teeth. Now a third one. Another set of teeth. Got it. UFO investigator Pedro Romanuk was assigned to the case because of his credentials as a former commander with an international airline. Not sure what that has to do with it. And a technical investigator for the Argentine Air Force Aviation Accidents Investigation Board. Hmm. I might have sent a dentist with him, but uh, he performed. But you know, the Air Force might do something too. Um, yeah, he's got a bunch of extra teeth after he saw a UFO. That, to summarize, there's a bunch more, but I'm summarizing. Uh, that's wild. 
They'll heal your horse. They'll break up your cockfight. They'll give you a new set of teeth. They'll give you some twofers. You might shit yourself, but you'll get new teeth. <laughs> and let's all just acknowledge what a simple price that is to pay for shiny new twofers. Honestly, man, I'd shit myself in exchange for free dental work. I gotta think about that. <laughs> if you weren't already insured. Sure. Also, it's not just dental work. It's like a whole clean slate. That's true. That's and true. And seventy something, you probably need it. Honestly, it would probably be it'd probably be pretty sick at that point. I'm thirty three, and I you know I could use a few things, but at seventy three, shit, you're gonna want my teeth are gonna be washed forty years from now. You're gonna want a fresh mouth, exactly. I mean, if you okay. So the other question though is like, does it happen instantly or like overnight? You know, mm -hmm. you have to go through the process of losing all your teeth. They again? had to grow in. Well, he didn't lose them. He just got a second set. He he went full shark mode. He? Maybe he maybe he bit the other dude. But then you don't even get the benefit of like having shiny, like fresh pearly whites to be able to like floss around town. I think all the reckless shit you could do though. Be opening <laughs> bottles with them. I'd just be trying to <laughs> chew through things. And it's still gonna hurt. I mean Yeah. I would just like I would just eat like bigger carrots. <laughs> bigger carrots. <laughs> yeah. Just eat a whole carrot and be like, what's up? Fuck with your boy. You can't eat a whole carrot right now? No, I'm saying How like... How soft are your teeth? No, I'm saying like if you, you had... Have, you got mush mouth. I'm saying you got full carrot. Got the mushy teeth. Like full whole uncut carrot, you could just like eat it real fast. Like bunny, like Bugs Bunny <laughs> style. Like... You know what I, I mean? I, no. I don't think I do. Fuck with me, I'm grown now. <laughs> All right, we got 10 minutes and a whole lot of David Wilcock bullshit. <laughs> Uh, for people who don't know, for for listeners who might not know who David Wilcock is, consider guys, yourself blessed. Guys, I don't know who David Wilcock is. Are um, you serious? No, I mean oh, I've dude. heard this name before. Oh, I don't know who he is. You're in for a time. Do, wh how is he? What makes him a knowable person to be able um, to speak at these events, so that I can figure out how we can be more knowable than him uh, sooner, so that we can excuse me be someone who speaks at these events. His forehead is on. Fuck with me. I'm grown now. Uh -oh. This is probably most uh, most redeeming trait. You got a five head. He's got like a fifty eleven head. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. Um, How do you think he keeps all his brilliance, <sighs> his alien brilliance in there, bro? He might be an alien, honestly. Big head, ill-fitting wig. You're looking for a button. Get there. Get there. It's a reptilian. Sick. Thank you. Um... He's been on Ancient Aliens. He was one of the first people to really fuck with Gaia. You know about Gaia? Yeah, we talked about it on the show. We did a whole episode about Gaia, didn't we? Huh? No, like the streaming service, not like the Mother Earth thing. Oh. It's like the weird shit Netflix. Yeah, you know about yeah, this? yeah. I've heard of this. Yeah. So he's he's got his own show on there with uh, that, that weirdo Corey Good. How do we get our own show they on there? They talk about blue space birds. You ever heard about the blue avians? Look, I'm just saying, if these people, these fucking people have no, a show No, we could do this shit if we wanted to lie to people. Yeah. I, no, I just want to go be us and talk about the same shit. If you want to lie for profit, I, I have better business proposals for you. I want to go be us and talk about the same shit we talk about. I just want to be as skeptical as we are on the show on no, a see, weekly that, basis. That doesn't work. You just have to be real, real convinced that it's true. Yeah. Be, and if you're willing to lie to large numbers of people, you should just go into actual business. Well, you know what we should do? We should we should just stop using the word allegedly. <laughs> well, okay. Time is of the essence. David Wilcock saying? had a presentation called Scientific Proof of Portals and the Global Grid. Fuck yeah, I'm already into it. Let's go. I got bad news for you. That's not what he talked about. Well, why? I don't know. Um, Hell his, no. His very first slide said 2014 a very odd square appears on the moon slide number one okay he then closes the slide and says that the doj as in the department of justice is going quote head to head with the cia and that quote this summer should be an absolute smorgasbord of disclosure smorgasbord of disclosure put it on the list correct um, <laughs> he then tells us that Tom, that Tom DeLong is working for the CIA. Sick. Yep. He then mentioned the quote, gigantic turnout, very large audience, huge audience, or 1200 people at least six to 10 times. 
he was very impressed by the number of people that were there to watch him. Was he being exaggerative or... The 1,200 is probably accurate. I'm just not sure why he felt the need to constantly reiterate it to those of us that were in that audience and mm. well aware of... You're like, where, bro, we're in the room where right we were. now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he went on this very long, rambling thing <laughs> that had nothing to do with portals or a global grid. Okay. But I think I sort of made sense of it. Okay. And I'm a little concerned that I think I may have sort of made sense of it. <laughs> I'm thrilled that you made sense of it because that means there's going to be a linear path here. I'm going to do my best. Fuck with your boy. Okay. Um, a long time ago, people lived in the moon, inside of it. Not like on the surface of it, but inside of it. And that's because the moon was a spaceship. That's an idea. Moon used to be a spaceship. And these people that lived inside the moon flew it around the galaxy like a spaceship. Oh. It had more than 10,000 decks inside of it. And he described it as sort of like a Noah's Ark in that it was filled with various types of life and could support many different types of life. Okay. He also made sure to tell us that it had several decks that were just ocean water. Not sure why that was important. Um, the moon is also the oldest object in our solar system. <sighs> Older than, I mean, the sun or planets somehow. I just like, I don't understand. No how evidence you, to support any of this. He's yeah, just, it's like, literally just him on a, he didn't even have like a slide up while he was saying any of these things. And he's, he's just saying them. And he's saying these as fact. He's not Correct. saying people say, he's saying, he's just saying, so now the moon is actually the oldest. Correct. Correct. Um, so the moon people, alien beings who lived inside the moon. Oh, I'm sorry. These moon people, alien beings are not us. No, they, they're some other oh. species. Oh, because it's older than our solar system, Ryan. Oh, so they came from outside our solar system long ago. Oh, I, I understand now. Yep. Did you ever think yep. maybe this guy's bullshitting you? Yes. Um, they learned somehow that there was going to be a giant solar flare and that the solar flare was going to destroy the earth. They didn't want this to happen, so they parked the moon spaceship in between the sun and the earth to act as a shield. However, this rendered the moon spaceship Noah's Ark thing useless as a spaceship Noah's Ark thing. Because it had absorbed this uh -huh. solar flare. Yep, and everyone that was living inside of it died. Oh. Except... Two alien families, which fled the moon in three motherships, and they oh. landed on Earth, specifically on Antarctica. A lot of Antarctica talk. Got it. Not really sure why. Got it. Because no one can prove that they're wrong because no one goes there. Yeah, I guess. Um, these two families worked together for a while, but then became divided, and one group moved into the Americas, and one group moved into Africa and Asia. Now, the reason that we have pyramids all over the Earth is because these two families were the pyramid builders. And so we have, he spent a long time showing us examples of pyramids in the Americas, in Asia, in Africa, in the Middle East, and they're all, you know, fucking pyramid shaped. And that's because it can all be traced back to this one lineage I just, of aliens who used to live inside the moon. From, I just, that came from outside of our solar system and was a spaceship. I feel like the. Uh, Oh boy, Hold on. I am so sorry. Yeah, just, ha just hang on, hang on. Um, one of these families <sighs> are Luciferians, aka Satan worshippers. Oh, they also so the devil was a thing when they were. Uh... Um, they also have elongated skulls and have infiltrated all levels of government and secret societies for thousands of years. So the same devil worshipping alien family that landed in, landed in Antarctica are in the Illuminati and ancient governments, our current government in the here in the United States. Okay. They're all over the place. Yep. I guess. And they're they're real nasty people. They sacrifice kids. Uh they started the California wildfires last year. Oh, did they? Yep. They also oh. they also burned down Notre Dame earlier this year. Oh, what a bunch of dicks. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> they're also skinwalkers. Oh, and in, geez. And in order to get their skinwalker powers, they have to kill children. Oh. So that's why the wildfires and the, the killing and the death and the glaive. And, Bummer. Mm-hmm. Um, they've poor, had, poor kids. They've had warp drive since 1947, which something to do with Roswell, I think, maybe. Well, that was the year that Roswell happened. Interesting that they were in a ship that was able to traverse the universe for... Well, the moon didn't work anymore, Ryan. Keep up. Oh, I see. So they, when they came to Earth, they redeveloped... They had their motherships, and, you know, maybe they had, like, Got a, it. you know... But it took them thousands or millions of millions. years. Yep. Millions of yeah, years. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. To redevelop a warp drive. Um, the next line of my notes says something about Rockefellers and Rothschilds. Oh, good I th- fucking I think, Lord. I think he was implying those are the two alien families. Um, also, this was a part where I lost him for a while. Oh, this is the part? Well, oh. t- t- where like even within his weird world, I couldn't quite follow what he was trying oh, to say. Okay, just checking. Uh, my mistake. <laughs> However, there are giants about 12 feet tall. The giants might be alien hybrids. I think he was saying the aliens fucked humans and made giants. Okay. Um, and the giants were living on Easter Island as recently as 1722. And the Easter Island heads are actually modeled after these giants that were living there a few hundred years ago. Okay. Um, they're, just, they're just all fucking like actual busts of themselves correct yeah that's that's cool. what he was saying yeah. cool 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 um there were three thousand seven hundred giant skeletons pulled off of catalina island off the coast of california three thousand seven hundred giant skeletons correct that you have no photos of and have never been reported anywhere else yes cool um and the giants like to wear weird cute hats to cover their big skulls and Aww. and they may have built the pyramids oh them too yep um, so, oh, and last thing about the weird giant alien races, the Sahara desert is actually the result of an ancient alien war well, and they, they wiped it out. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. They pulverized everything into dust. Correct. Or sand. Uh, actually his words were, they bulldozed it. They bulldozed <laughs> it. Yes. Is that? Yes. That's <laughs> what happens. That's a quote from David Wilk. One big bulldozer <laughs> across the continent. And now it's sand. Uh huh. Um, so when they bulldozed <laughs> Africa, I'm a, 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 I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, okay. L- last, last thing about this, this arc that he's trying to paint for us. Tom DeLong. You're familiar. Oh. It's going to be a a subject of our. Pa- you don't know this yet, but a subject of our Patreon episode this week. Uh, well, last week technically. Yeah, that too. Yep. Um, he is a Freemason, and he's working on behalf of the CIA, which has actually been infiltrated by these Luciferian aliens. Does Does Tom know this? Unclear. Got it. But David knows this. Obviously. Obviously. David knows everything. The disclosure that we are currently in the midst of with yeah. these, you know, New York Times articles and the right. To the Stars stuff. Yeah. Um, is an attempt by the Luciferians who have infiltrated the CIA and hired Tom DeLonge as their PR rep. Sure. It's an attempt by them to convert us to their religion. Oh, AKA worshiping the devil. Correct. Mm. Okay. So that he was. He has been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. I don't think anyone is really deceived, but we definitely have been bamboozled. Oh. I'm sure some people were deceived. There was actually a woman two seats to my left who every 10 minutes or so would just lean over to her husband and whisper, that's true. Nuh-uh. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> it's maybe my favorite part of, oh. of like the whole weekend. She was just like, yeah, oh, that's true. God. Uh. <laughs> um. Okay, so that took one hour and 57 minutes of his two-hour long presentation. What? And then at 12.57, for a presentation that had to be done by one, he starts talking about a global grid in which he basically said, like, there's a Bermuda Triangle, but there are other Bermuda Triangles, and they all line up. Oh. And then... Oh, God. He ended his presentation, 
And there were some people like up towards the front in the front row who were psyched and they had just been, you know, very entertained. I'm getting dickered on this one. They stood up and they were clapping and like, yeah, woo, Dave, Dave. And he walked up to the front of the stage with his phone out and was just filming the people cheering for him for a while. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh my God! I don't. So if you hit up David Wilcox's oh. social media, there might be some footage of uh, God from Contact in the Desert of him just filming people cheering for him. Everyone, come see how good I look! <laughs> All right, to close this episode. Hey, internet! <laughs> they love me. <laughs> to close this, I'm brilliant. <laughs> Dex in the moon <laughs> You fucking jerk off What the fuck God to, to close I have a section in my In the David Wilcox section of my notes Labeled other crazy shit <laughs> Let's do it Are we gonna rapid fire some other crazy shit To yeah. end the episode Yeah which I which fuck I yeah. couldn't directly tie to the, the Bigger arc he was Creating for us but is worth saying I'm here for it Quote the moon is a death star. Hell yeah. Present tense, apparently. Um, no, I'm fine with that one. That one's cool. He thinks a lot of movies are real, including Marvel, Star Wars, and 2001. What do you mean, thinks they're real? Um, he thinks the events described have actually happened. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't know how to help you more than that, because I don't understand it. Hell no. <laughs> and Antarctica is Atlantis. They are one and the same. There are, oh, yeah. <laughs> there are hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the military, I'm assuming he means U.S. military, fighting for disclosure. Um, he Hell kept, no. He kept talking about a cabal and an alliance. Cool. He didn't ever describe what either of those were, but he did say that the, he ca knows. He that knows. the cabal used to, be con uh, used to control the NSA, but as of November of, this, of last year, the alliance took it back. So don't worry, the cabal is not listening to your phone calls anymore. Hell no. The inspector general is releasing a report this week, meaning last week. No, by today. What episode is this? I don't know. Uh, this is coming out in six days. There should be an, a report out right now if David Wilcock is not a liar, which he obviously is, <laughs> from the inspector general reporting that the, de that the moon is a Death Star. Hell no! <laughs> this should be available to the public right now. I'm fine. As we speak, according to David Wilcock. I'm fine with making jokes about the moon being a Death Star. I'm not fine with actually saying that there's going to be a report coming out. This about it. last week, um, giants used to eat humans. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David Wilcock believes that Russian men should not cry. <laughs> What? <laughs> he said this during his presentation. Hell no. <laughs> Every man should cry. It's really good for you to cry. If you don't cry, you're going to fucking die of a heart attack. The, at like CIA, 40. <laughs> the CIA has its own army and its own UFOs. Hell yeah. The West Coast. That's, true. <laughs> That's just true. <laughs> That's true. That's just true. <laughs> <laughs> the West Coast Illuminati is headquartered in San Diego. The East Coast Illuminati is headquartered in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Hell no! Hell no! <laughs> what is this guy <laughs> saying? How do you do this, man? <laughs> I haven't looked back at these since I wrote them. What the fuck? <laughs> I literally it's can't read my notes right now. <laughs> Pittsburgh, huh? Uh, Pittsburgh. I don't know why Pittsburgh of all things really got me. <laughs> uh, I can't. It's such uh, a clearly not Russian because I'm crying from laughing right now. Um, oh, he, man. he claimed that we can make distilled water from old car tires. Hell no! <laughs> there's a shadow war. Oh, lastly, there's a shadow war going on between the Dragon family and the Illuminati. Hell yeah! <laughs> I don't know what the dragon family is, but they fucking hate the Illuminati. <laughs> the dragon family. <laughs> put it on the list. Put it on the list. <laughs> and the dragon family uh, that hates the Illuminati is uh, our, my favorite thing. I'm 
I made it through that whole thing, and I was so uh, proud of myself by, holy, by the end of the two hours. Two fucking hours. Uh, there are really good movies that are shorter than that. Bro, David Wilcock. Fuck me. Sorry, Jimmy, I couldn't get a photo with him. I, I tried. He was. He did not respond to our PR request. Him and David Childress both said they weren't feeling it. <laughs> did they actually yeah. proactively? We asked, and they both said no. Uh... That's fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, we tried. Sorry. Oh, shit, man. All right. Well, till next year. <laughs> See you guys next week slash next year. Uh, if Contact you want- if you're listening. We will totally come and uh, hang out and interview your people and do a podcast. Or do a podcast or something. We'll get some young people out there next year. Hell yeah. Thanks for the partnership. Uh, one more time, if you go to stitcherpremium.com and enter the code what, you get a free month of Stitcher Premium and you help the Swery Boys out. So go do it. Give it a shot. There's good content. Hashtag content on there. Uh, if you want to be one of our voicemail leavers, you can do that at 612 246 4614. You can send us an email. Our email inbox is always open. It's hi at whatifpodcast.com. We're at what if pod on all the socials. We got a Facebook group. There's a thousand motherfuckers in there hanging out, being weird. Leave us an iTunes review, it helps us. Go to our website, buy a shirt. I just think twice. Don't got all the money in the world, but the truth kid like Bill Bates and it feels right. Mama, do you like my swag? Feeling like my jack, rolling with the stars hand. Chill, chill, don't be mad. I've been living out my dreams, came up from my past, but tell me what's next. Everything came together, don't guess, don't flex. I don't know about y'all, take steps. I'm a rep, blow the whistle, play the game, get the check. Trying to be a legend, apex. Yeah, yeah. Went from the sky to the hills, had a better all together. I just hope that I live right. Smile through it all, and kisses to my babies and the ladies. I just hope for a good night.